need to know this if your power provider is SCE, PG&E, or SDG&E. I'm sure you've heard that there's been some major changes to the solar industry here in California, or that it may be dead altogether. That's not necessarily true. I'll break down what exactly the changes are in this video. Hi, I'm Tom with Premier Roof Solar. I've been helping homeowners save money on their power bills for the last five years with renewable energy. My goal is to educate and empower homeowners like you so that you can make the best decision for your unique situation. In one of my recent videos, I covered why solar is not dead in California and why there were rumors that it was and what options you have to get around them. I touched a little on what the changes were and who was affected. In this video, I'll be explaining in depth what exactly those changes are and what you can do to get around them. If your power provider is SCE, PG&E, or SDG&E, pay close attention because you're in an affected area. These three companies are investor-owned utilities who own 72% of the market here in California. As investor-owned utilities, they actively lobby to keep a tight grip on their monopoly and maximize their profits. That's why the change from NEM2 to NEM3 is so favorable to them and not to the consumer, aka homeowners like you. So the way that it worked was that during the day, most if not all of your electricity usage would be covered by your solar. And for any overproduction, you'd get credits. With NEM2, you'd get full retail value for any energy, aka the kilowatt hours that you sold to the power company. This means that those credits would cover your evening usage or cover you for months where you have underproduction. And then on your annual true up bill, you'd be pretty close to break even, maybe pay a little bit, or maybe even get paid a little bit by the power companies. So let's take a quick look at what the retail value is per kilowatt hour for SE. Here we have a recent SoCal Edison bill. Total charges, or $807. Now, if you look here, there's two line items that total the 807. I'll have another video that covers why there's two separate line items, but let's move on here. So it's $807 and the total usage was 2,065. The way you calculate the rate all in is to get the total bill, which was 807.46, and you just divide it by the usage for the month. And as you can see here, the per kilowatt rate is 39 cents per kilowatt hour. I look at dozens of bills a month, and usually what I see is between 31 cents and 37 cents per kilowatt hour. That's just a typical range. In recent months, I've seen bills that have as low as 28 cents per kilowatt hour, or even as high as 42 cents per kilowatt hour. So what did NEM3 do exactly? Well, the daytime usage is still covered by solar while you're generating, but overproduction is no longer worth the retail value. It's worth the wholesale value, which tends to hover around seven cents per kilowatt hour, or about 25% of what the average retail value is at this time. But let's take a look at the California Public Utility Commission's government website and SCE's website for a little bit more detail. All right, so here we are. Uh, customer cited renewable energy generation. That's what you would have as a homeowner with solar. So let's scroll here through net energy metering and net billing. Uh, and just so you know, NBT stands for net billing tariff. That is NEM3. They're just calling it NBT now. So the NBT's major difference from NEM 2.0 is that under NBT, compensation for excess generation exported to the electric grid is applied to a customer's bill at the rate reflecting the value of this generation to the grid. So now if we look at the excess generation or net surplus compensation from SCE, we can see here on their own chart that it's for 2023 between six to seven cents, almost eight cents in April. Uh, but at the time of this recording, it's closer to six cents. This means that if you look at it for the year, your overproduction is only going to be covering about 25% of your evening usage. Is it exactly 25%? Probably not. The numbers are going to fluctuate depending on a whole slew of factors, but that gives you a rough ballpark figure. Keep in mind that with NEM3, they also did away with the annual true up. So everything is charged on a month to month basis. Your usage will be charged month to month. So on the months that you underproduce, you're going to get a bill for that usage. So what are your options? Let's take a look at what the CPUC says. Let's go back to their website here uh, and scroll up. So here I have it highlighted again. Uh, customer generators can maximize bill savings under the NBT by installing battery storage along with their generation so they can use or export stored energy during the high value hours. So you definitely have options. You have two overarching options. Number one, 
You can get solar that covers you only during the daytime. With 12 months worth of bills, you can calculate how much you use in a year just during the daytime hours and build a system specifically around that. Number two, you can get a battery. If you select to go with a battery, there are two options from there. You can get it as a pass-through. That depends on the installer. Not everyone offers that. If they do offer it, it does reduce the cost of the battery installation. With this option, you're not going to have a backup. The other option is to have it as a backup. It's going to cost a little bit more, but you'll have power during outages. So how does this exactly work in terms of uh, the credits and not getting billed by Edison or maximizing your savings? Essentially what happens is that during the day, your solar panels are powering your home. Any overproduction is going to charge the battery. As you go into the evening and your solar panels stop producing, you're going to start relying on the battery to power your home. Any overproduction beyond powering your home and then charging the battery is going to go to the power company and then that's when you get the wholesale price for those credits to cover any additional usage that you may have. Remember that a battery will power the breakers that are connected to it. So if you wanna hook something up that's a high amp breaker like a electric vehicle rapid charger or an air conditioner, you more than likely will need multiple batteries. With an air conditioner, you also need a soft starter. So there's some additional costs associated with that. If you wanna back up your whole home, even if you don't have a swimming pool or a electric vehicle, again, you will more than likely need multiple batteries to do that. A bunch of different roof variables, shading, and how much energy you actually need will dictate how many batteries you need and the amount of savings that you can get. So no, solar is not dead in California, even in the areas covered by the California Public Utility Commission. It's mainly just a matter of getting some additional equipment and seeing if the numbers check out. If you want to learn more about solar, check out my solar cheat sheet in the description below. Or if you're looking into solar and you want to see if it makes sense for you and your home, connect with me. Check the links below.